Uh, once again, we are thankful to God for the opportunity to be back with you ministering God's word. It's always a blessing and an honor to be with God's, God's children all over the nations of the world. And um, once again tonight, I'm so blessed to have an old friend uh, of mine, a dear friend of mine, Don uh, and Marlene Ostrom. And um, like I said to you, when, I, uh, when God introduced me to the United States so many years ago, um, Seattle, Washington is one of the first places I came into, uh, apart from many other cities of the United States. And um, they were like family for me here in America. And uh, they flew me down here with my wife. And uh, sorry she couldn't make it. Uh, she had traveled to Europe for two weeks and came back, and the kids were all back home. And uh, I just felt it was right for her to stay with the kids and just fellowship with them all because... We just go so long, and we just keep going, going, and sometimes it's hard on the children. So I pray that you all just uh, forgive us, and uh, hallelujah. But uh, like I said, Don and Marlene were such a blessing, and uh, they flew me down here, flew me to um, uh, the Philippines, and we, we just traveled all over the nations of the world to Kenya and to places, and uh, we just enjoyed one another, and um, I just thank God for them, and like I said this morning, that one of the things Marlene said, he said, he said, preacher, uh, when you come to America, don't come begging the American people, trust God. You know, and uh, that, that, that really did me a lot of good, that over the years, uh, it, it helped me as I walked through uh, so many places, uh, been fortunate to preach in so many mega churches all across the United States, and it, it, it has never left me. I have learned to trust God and never to beg. We built a church back home in Ghana over uh, $4.5 million, and um, we didn't beg anybody for a dime. Uh, we just trust God. We trusted God, and it's been done. And God uh, made our need provided and uh, gave us a miracle, and he still does provide. And, and, and uh, I will always remember Don and Marlene Ostrom. I tell people all over America, I said, uh, those are my true family people. They are blacks, but somehow um, God took them out of the sun and brought them out here and left me out there. He, he left me out in the sun and brought them into the snow. So I became dark and they remain white. So uh, hallelujah. But, but I'm so glad to be with them. And uh, they are always fun to be with. Great people and uh, great people of God who love God and uh Living for the, these are people who truly live for the cause of Christ and the gospel and not for themselves. And I've known that uh, over the years, so we are thankful that uh, uh, they could take time to be with us. Donna travel with um, uh, his pastor, uh, Pastor Wendell Smith, and I thank God for Pastor Wendell, who's a good friend of mine from the city church, uh, which is also the church Pastor Emmanuel attends. Um, it's a great church and a great house, and uh, the Bible said that in every house uh, there are many vessels, and the vessels that will sanctify themselves will, will be vessels that will be used for honor. And so I thank God that uh, he belongs to a great church and a great place, and um, uh, God is using him for great and mighty works, and we praise God for all of you from the city church. And uh, How many of you are here from the city church without me? Great, and um, those of you from uh, another great man of God in the city, Casey Treat. Anybody from Casey Treat's church here? God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. We do appreciate you. And uh, the rest of you from all the other churches in the city, uh, we are thankful for your life. And I want you to know that this is not a church. Okay, this is not a church, and he has no plans to start a church. You know, uh, I want you to know that... Uh, I've sat with him, I've counseled with him, and his plans is not to start a church. If he tries to go back at his word, he has to talk to the Lord about it, and I will come after him. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you, can, you can hold me for that. I will surely come after him. He will not do that. He has too much integrity. And one of the reasons why I say that is for many years he's been with me, and um, we try to let him pastor some of our churches. I have 25 churches in the city of Accra, apart from the 200 churches I oversee across Africa and Europe. And I gave him an opportunity to pastor some of the churches. He said, no, God didn't call me to pastor. 
And uh, I said, but you got to pastor. He said, nope. He said, that is not my uh, assignment. So we, we had a problem with one of our mega churches, and we had to move the pastor to another nation in Africa. So I, I, I sent him in there for six months to pastor the church. And he did a great work, but he didn't like it. He just didn't want to pastor. I said, that is not my grace and that is not my calling, you know. So um, I just know that he has no ambition to do any such thing because that is not his area. And I, I see that God is blessing him in his area yes. and what he believes God is calling him to do. So um, just want to say that so you can appreciate that um, uh, this is not about one of those games people play. Right. And I won't put my weight behind him. If he's going to play a game, I won't be here. Because I've been on the road for too long, and I want to go to heaven. Oh, you don't want to go to heaven? Yeah, I mean, the greatest thing I want to do in life is to, is to, is to do the will of God and go to heaven. Apart from every other thing, I want to stand before him when everything is done. And I want to hear him say to me, down well. Uh, you know, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Not, not, not a great guy, but faithful in what I call you to do. And whatever God wants for me to do is just what I'm committed to. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Um, we, we spoke about the rising up of the Elijah's generation last night. And uh, yesterday morning I spoke about the importance of networking among the body of Christ. Coming together, putting aside each one of our uh, crowns and our titles, just put it at the feet of the master and, and realize that nobody is a star and a hero in the kingdom, that we are all called to network and to work with one another, to build a great, a great thing for the kingdom, living for the cause of Christ. And I spoke about the fact that Islam and many religions are becoming so powerful, and the reason is because there are people who are willing not just to believe in a cause, but to die in a cause. It's not worth uh, believing in something that you cannot die for. And, and uh, tonight I want to talk to you about what happens when men sleep. Uh, I spoke to you this afternoon, uh, this morning, throughout the day. We spoke about the patterns of the bloodline, dealing with the issues uh, of the bloodline, resolving the bloodline issues. And I said to you that the woman that suffered from an issue of blood, um, she had a serious issue and she, she bled for so many years. And I said that unresolved blood issues will cause you to bleed. And you can go, you can bleed from one generation to another generation when the issues of the bloodline are not resolved. Uh, and uh, we dealt with some deep, serious, heavy issues here. And uh, how many of you were really blessed for, for that? Amen. Uh, uh, hallelujah. And I said, the, I said to the fact that, that, that in the book of Genesis, the serpent, the snake, that was not killed and dealt with in the book of Genesis became a dragon in the book of Revelation. And I said that when God told Saul to destroy Amalek and he spared Amalek, a man rose from Amalek and killed him. So things that we don't deal with today and kill today will become stronger than us tomorrow. There are three cities God told Joshua to annihilate on their way to the promised land, and he spared those three cities. And out of those cities came great, great, great trouble for the people of Israel so many years after. One of them was God, and out of God came Goliath of the Philistine giant. And Goliath uh, was, was a giant, uh, and he had four other brothers. There were five giants from one little giant from God. And all, every one of those five giants fought the nation of Israel. And, and David and his mighty men slew them all by the power of Jehovah. And one of those other cities came a woman by the name of Delilah, who under a, a satanic and demonic anointing from the pit, destroyed one of the heroes of Israel, a great deliverer by the name of Samson. And so things that we don't deal with today will live to fight our kids tomorrow. And I said today that when David failed to overcome the issue of the bloodline and to break the pattern of the bloodline, he reopened the door of the past and there was a visitation. And because he became a victim to something that was in the blood that wasn't dealt with, his sons and his kids became a victim to what uh, plagued their father. And so we got, we got to fight. 
and we must overcome this battle. Well, we don't have we don't have too much time to fool around anymore. It, it is time it is time to realize that uh, we, we are dealing with with, with with an agenda that is time sensitive. And I spoke this afternoon also about time sensitive cases and time sensitive assignments. Uh, and we cannot take things for granted. Uh, we got to pray like we have never prayed before. We must understand that heaven is ready to sound the trumpet. Uh, but we need to send much prayers uh, into uh, the heavenly realm. And I said that uh, earth is connected with heaven. The Bible said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And heaven always relates to earth. But earth can receive nothing from heaven until prayer rises up from earth to heaven. Anytime you see heaven respond to earth, it was a result of three reasons. Prayer, sacrifice, and obedience. And like never before, we need, uh, the other day, uh, a great prophet, Isaiah, one of the major prophets of the Bible, cried out in Isaiah uh, 64. And he said, Oh, that thou mightest rent up the heavens and come down and do it again, that the mountains may flee before thee. And that our enemies may perish before thee. The Bible said, even as smoke is carried away by the wind, so let the enemies of Zion be carried away. And as wax melt before fire, so let the enemies of Jehovah perish in the presence of our God. Like never before, we need praying men and praying women. Thank God for praying churches. Thank God for praying pastors. Thank God for praying congregation. Thank God for praying people. But like never before, we need the rising up of the Elijah generation. A people that will pray until something happens. Prayer is not an option. Are you hearing me, somebody? And there is no substitute for prayer. Are you hearing me, somebody? Ah, if you pray, you will see changes. Persistence and consistent prayer produces permanent results. And if we want to see a permanent victory and permanent results in our life, we've got to be persistent and consistent in prayer like we've never prayed before. Because heaven can do nothing for earth until prayer rises up in heaven. The Bible said in Psalm 141 verse 2, he said, Let my prayer be set before you as incense and the lifting up of my hands as an even sacrifice. Like never before, heaven needs some incense. In the golden census of incense in heaven. Uh, to mix it with fire. To return it back to earth. So that there can be lightnings and earthquakes. And the voice of God may thunder in the corridors of power. For the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. And if ever before we've heard the voice of God. It is now. It is now. It is now than never before. What will cause the kings of the earth to bow their knees and to acknowledge that the heavens rule in the affairs of men is when the voice of the Lord thunders in their ears. Then they will realize that once we have heard and twice it's been spoken that power belongs to God and none other. Somebody shout, I hear you. If you turn your Bibles with me, if you please. To Matthew, the 14th chapter and the 38th verse. We want to talk about what happens when men slept. Oh my God, I feel something in the house. I don't know about you, but I have a feeling that God is up to something. Come on, you didn't hear me. I said, I have a feeling that God is up to something. Give somebody a high five and say, I have a feeling that God got something under his sleeve. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Shout yes. yes. Mm, hallelujah. I feel him in the house. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. Mm, hallelujah. Matthew, the 14th chapter and the 38th verse. Yes, ma'am. 38. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Let's check the 36th verse. Where's Matthew? Come on. And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment? No. No. Go to Matthew 13, 24 to 28. 
Matthew 13, I'm sorry, 24 to 28. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. And Underline the word. When did the enemy come in? When did the enemy come in? Somebody say satanic invasion. Satanic invasion. He could not invade until men what? Slept. So he can't come in until men what? Sleep. Uh, keep that in mind. That's why the Bible says watch and what? You see, the reason why a lot of folks are in praying is because they are not watching. Because if you watch, you pray. If you are watching, then you have a reason to pray. Because if you are watching, it means you are alert. You are awake. You are vigilant. Are you hearing me, somebody? Amen. Uh, and you are on the alert so you can see. You can detect when you are awake. And when you detect and when you see, it will cause you to pray. But when you sleep and danger is coming, you don't see. Because you are slumbering. And when we talk about sleeping here, he's referring to spiritual slumber. When men slept. Go ahead. The enemy came in and sowed tares among the wheat and the went The enemy away. came in and sowed tares. Go ahead. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit... Then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? He, he, said, he said, Didn't you what? Sow good what? Seed. And then he said, He said, Who did this? Who did that? Didn't God give you good kids? Didn't God give you something good that was a blessing? How come what is meant for a blessing has become a grief and a burden and a pain? The enemy has done this. Didn't God give you good children? How come they acting crazy? Are you hearing me? When you were slumbering and you weren't awake and alert, they were watching all kinds of movies. They were open to all kinds of stuff. And you see, what you have to understand that the devil is a long-term planner. Is anybody hearing me? Realize, folks, hear me. You got to understand when was that which the enemy sold detected? When? No, 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 no. It wasn't detected until harvest time. You didn't hear me. You didn't get it. When was it detected? At harvest time. So the enemy has set you up, not for where you are right now, but for where you're going. Are you hearing me, somebody? He, he's setting you up for the peak of life. Because if he hits you where you are right now, it means nothing to him. So what he wants to do is to set you up for 10, 20 years from now, and when you are the peak, at the point of your life, when you are supposed to enjoy, then suddenly they discover cancer in your body. Suddenly, the son or the daughter that is to inherit the business is acting crazy and don't want to have anything to do with God. You said, didn't I raise up a good kid? Didn't I take care of my body and act wisely and exercise? Where is this coming from? An enemy has done Read it again. You gotta get it. There's a lot in there. Start all over again. Come on, Mama. Work with me. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Stop No. There. I want you to hear me carefully. Please believe me that the enemy you and I are dealing with is not stupid. A lot of folks think the devil is stupid. He's not stupid. 
the devil we are dealing with is a falling archangel. And the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And the Bible said thou was perfect from the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. Are you hearing me, somebody? And, and, and the enemy we're dealing with is very anointed. He's an anointed cherub. And he fell, but the gifts were still with him. And so, if you think that the devil, I hear people saying, you stupid devil, the devil is no stupid. He's a very intelligent devil. How old are you? He's been around for 7,000 years. Is anybody hearing me? He's been around for a long time. So in dealing with the enemy, you got to understand that you're dealing with, with an adversary that is very sophisticated and very intelligent. And he has time at his hand, but you don't have time. And he sets you up for long term. The enemy we are dealing with is a long term enemy. And he plans long term. You got to understand that when the sower went to sow, the enemies invaded what he has planted. He came to the field when men slept. And he came in and shut up what he wanted to put in there. And nobody detected it until harvest time. That is why churches grow. And whilst they are growing, the enemy can move in there and plant a seed. And unless the intercessors are awake and alert and are not just praying. You see, it's dangerous to just pray, pray without seeing. We need seers in the church. Because without seers, the work can grow. And the enemy don't care about you growing. He will let you grow. But he will set you up at the peak to hit you. If you look at what happened to a lot of our TV brothers, TV evangelists, some of our brothers, the enemy got them at the peak. But what got them began before they got to the peak. But the enemy planted it for harvest time. And, and there are prayers we got to pray right now for our kids and for ourselves. We got to begin to do some preventive prayers right now. We got to begin to prohibit any surprises of the enemy concerning our future and the future of our kids. We got to avert every satanic surprises. We got to go into satanic wombs and into satanic incubators. And we got to begin to cause to miscarry and cause to be aborted. Whatever the enemy has conceived concerning your future and my future, we got to begin to abort satanic pregnancies. Listen, I will always say this because it's my conviction. And you cannot judge me based on my conviction. I always say this, that 9-11 could have been aborted. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah. It could have been aborted if the watchers, right. if the intercessors right. upon the city of that, upon the wall of the great city of New York, were on the alert, yes. were vigilant. If they were awake, they could have, somebody should have seen it. Right. It could have been averted. Some way, somehow, something should have gone wrong to avert it. And the reason why 9-11 could not be detected by our intelligent networks all over the world was because it wasn't an intelligent issue. Because the United States have one of the most sophisticated intelligent networks in the entire world. You fool around and they got you. But 9-11 was not an intelligent issue. Because those folks are not sophisticated like America. It wasn't an intelligent issue. It was a spiritual issue. It wasn't meant to be detected by security intelligence. It was a spiritual issue. And it was always only the responsibility of the intercessors to uncover it. But somewhere, somehow, we were praying without seeing. And many were in praying. And like I said, God told me, the reason why I'm teaching on prayer everywhere right now, like I can't preach anything else by prayer, is because the Lord said to me, he said, Son, there is a bankruptcy of prayer in the church. So he said, I want you to go. And he said, don't just teach, but compel my people to pray. Hallelujah. 
As we sit here right now, I want you to hear me. There are a lot of people seated here under the sound of my voice. The enemy has set you up for the greatest moment of your life. And that is what we call time-sensitive blessings. You've been shut up for the, great, for the most greatest moment of your life. And the enemy has set you up right now, but you don't see it. I tell some of the young pastors around me, I look at them and I said, you got to change this thing because in the next 10 years of your life, if you don't do something about this attitude, it will sabotage where you're going. I said, this attitude is a self-destruction attitude. I said, this is, this is, this is a self-destruction tendency you have. That is the enemy we're dealing with. And that's why Jesus said, any tree that my father has not planted shall be rooted out. And we got to begin to pray some prayers right now. Prophetic and strategic prayers that God, anything in my life and in my attitude and my bloodline, whatever it is that the enemy has planted when I slept, when I was, when I was not vigilant, when I slumbered, whatever it is that the enemy has planted that will lift up his head to sabotage my prophetic destiny, I want it uprooted now. I want to lay the axe to the root now. You see, longevity is determined by your foundation. Longevity is determined by depths. It is depths that determines height. The Bible said, take root downwards. That you may bear fruit upwards. Is anybody hearing me? When men. What? Slept. An enemy what? So what? Tears. He couldn't have done it. When men were awake. And there are a lot of forces. That are causing people to slumber. There was a guy in full gospel in Ghana many years ago, Dana Bebrese. This guy was powerful. He used to visit my church, but he wasn't a member. And I loved him because I was very committed to full gospel all over Africa. I helped them to set up full gospel all over the nations of Africa because that is my anointing. With, with a strong apostolic anointing I have, I go into places and I break the atmosphere open. I mean, that's the gift God gave me. So they always want me to come with him. With them, and I love this guy. One time I had a word of knowledge, and I said, Dan, uh, I perceive in the spirit that the enemy is really on your case, and, and I just want you to stay in touch with me. You know, like, let me know what you're doing, and just, 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 just every now and then, just come around, let's pray, and let's talk. But he was so busy making money, became so big that he had no time. And the wife told me something that really bothered me. He said, a few weeks before he died, he will wake up early hours of the morning, like between 3 to 4, and leave the room and go to the hall to pray. And he kept saying, I've got to pray. I have a feeling. I'm feeling something. I've got to pray. And he'll go sit down in the sitting room and sleep. Something just came about him. And he slept. And it happened for weeks until the day he had an accident and died. And I said to the wife, why didn't you tell me? He said, you know, I really didn't know what was going on. But that was a spirit of slumber coming on him to prevent him from locating and identifying and apprehending and comprehending what the enemy had in satanic wounds. His death was already conceived. It was a satanic pregnancy. And the enemy was looking for the right time to give birth to it. And he didn't want it to be interfered with. But I decree a divine interference with any satanic pregnancy. Whatever the enemy has conceived concerning you, your wife, your kids, your future, your grandchildren, I command it in the name of Yeshua right now to miscarry. The Bible says in the book of Hosea chapter 9, he said, give the enemy a miscarriage womb and give the enemy a dry breast. A dry breast means we will not allow, number one, give the enemy a dry, uh, a dry breast and a miscarriage womb. 
And if anything has been given birth to, let that which nourishes the enemy's messengers and gives them life, dry it up. That means isolate them in a dry place. Keep them in the wilderness. Let them be isolated. Are you hearing me? From that which will keep them alive. And let them die. Let them not be able to fly and to carry out the assignment. Isolate the enemy. Cut off his wings. Are you hearing me, somebody? Somebody say, prayer is strategic. And it's about time the church began to pray strategic prayers. I have seen too many good people, men and women of God, killed prematurely, die. Through all kinds of accidents and situations, the enemy takes them out just like that. I was in a place called North Dakota. And before I went to North Dakota, I was in Memphis, Tennessee, in my hotel. And most of the time I pray at midnight to cover my trips before I travel. And at midnight I finished praying, and I was meditating on the word. And I saw the moon, the half moon, appeared in my hotel room. And I saw... The spirit of the bear, the half moon and the bear came into my room. And I said, Lord, what minute this? And he said, the moon and the bear, that is the power of the medicine man. I said, the medicine man? He said, that is the power of the red Indian medicine man. And he's coming to test your strength and your stamina in the spirit. So I said, what do I do? He said, nothing. So I left it and I went to sleep. I got to North Dakota. We had a 10 hours prayer. Prayer summit in North Dakota. And we finished praying and we were leaving to another city next to North Dakota. As we were going, we got to a particular place and I felt very uneasy in my spirit. Very disturbed inside of me. I felt this inner pressure. And, and disturbance in my spirit. And it was like I was troubled inside. And I said, Lord, what is this? And I had nothing. So I said to everybody, I want everybody to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And then one of my pastors said, what's going on? I said, I don't know, but we've been set up. I said, we've been set up. We've been set up. Just pray in the Spirit. We began to pray in the Spirit less than 10 minutes. The right time went off. And the car just somersaulted. And everybody began to scream. And I sat down cool and easy. And then the car came back again on the highway. And we all just came back quiet. Everybody was quiet. And immediately a car pulled from the other side and came and said, are you all okay? And we said, yes, yes, we're okay. And he said, whoever you are, God is with you. And I said, why you said that? He said, you see that river there? That is the devil's lake. They call it the devil's lake. It's in North Dakota. The devil's lake. And he said, that is the power of the medicine man. And he said, nobody has accidents here to survive. He said, every accident at this point, they always die. And he said, at this time of the year, they always have accidents at this place and they die. I couldn't die because I had an assignment. Are you hearing me, somebody? I am undiable and I am unkillable. Say, I'm undiable and I'm unkillable. But you got to understand that the Spirit of God will always give us the promptings. The Spirit of God. One of, one of, one of our sisters was going for a dinner in Africa. A very prominent person invited her. But before she left, we picked it up in the spirit that she'll be poisoned. So we said, don't go. And if you go, don't eat the food. But this person that invited her was the vice president. Very powerful people. Lots of money. So she felt that if she didn't go, it would affect her business, her relationship, and everything. So she went. And somehow, she forgot the word of knowledge that was given to her. And she ate the food. And she was poisoned. And we almost lost her. The doctors did everything and they said, there's nothing we can do about it. It's a poison. She's going to die. 
We can't flush it out. It's too late. And we have to pray for her every three hours for one week. Every three hours. Stay with her every three hours to deal with death and all the symptoms of death. To, dis- to dismiss the symptoms of death from every organ of her body and to inject and infuse life every three hours for one week. And I literally have to say, I prohibit your death before the Lord. I prohibit your death. I disallow your death. You cannot die. You are prevented. I suspend your death until further notice. We got to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost like never before. But how do I become sensitive to the Holy Ghost? It is yielding to the promptings of the Spirit and realizing that you just can't be praying without watching. I was going to the kitchen many years ago and the Spirit of the Lord said to me, go put off the switch. And I said, why? That is connected to the fridge, the deep freezer. We got meat, food, everything in the freezer. And the Spirit of God said, put it off. So I did. Few minutes after, my little girl, who is 20 years now, she woke up and there was nobody in the room. And she came to the hall. There was nobody there. And she crawled to where the freezer and the fridges and everything was. And there was this transformer a friend of mine brought for me. Powerful transformer. And the wires and everything was all around it. And she went playing around and sat on it. And when I came by and saw her, I panicked. And I I immediately grabbed her. And you know what the guy told me? The electrician? He said, you have no idea what happened. I said, talk to me. He said, that thing had power to would have killed her and you. He said, it would have killed her immediately. And when you saw it and you touched her, you would have gone to. That scared me. And, and that made me begun to pray like I've never prayed before. Because I'm telling you, you cannot f- fool around. There's no way we can protect our kids without the Holy Ghost anymore. It takes the Spirit of the Lord now to watch over our own kids. Because there is so much mess out there that it takes the Spirit of the Lord to watch over our children. Watch and pray. Watch. Stay alert. Be vigilant, sober. Hallelujah. Come with me to Ezekiel 33, verse 1 to 7. Ezekiel 33, 1 to 7. Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Get it. When he sees what? Somebody talk to me. Can I talk to you? When he sees what? What does he do? So that you cannot see if you are not watching. Is anybody hearing me? And you cannot blow the trumpet if you don't see something. Is anybody hearing me? So that is why we need intercessors in the church. To pray for the pastors. To pray for the churches. To pray for the city. Because as an intercessor, you are a watchman for your family. You watch for your family. You watch for your community. You watch for your church. You watch for your nation. The other day, we were praying, and the Lord said to me, he said, there is a plot to kill the president. And I said, is it going to be another coup d'etat? And the Lord said, no, it's not going to be a coup d'etat. I said, what do I do? He said, tell him, warn him. So I called him. I said, your excellency, we need to talk. He said, when? I said, now. 
He said, come home. So I drove to his house. And I said, there's a plot to kill you. He said, what do you think? Because we all think that there was going to be another coup because we have just come from a situation of so much coup d'etat. And I said, no, he's not going to try anything. It's not him. This is a conspiracy. They're going to try something in another way. So we prayed. And I said, I take a comprehensive insurance over your life. On the account of the eternal blood, I ensure your spirit, soul, and body prohibit your death. And whatever this conception is, whatever this satanic pregnancy is, let it miscarry. And he, I left and he traveled to the next city. We were in prayer for eight hours. He was coming from another city, from Kumasi, Don and Malin knows Kumasi, to Accra. Few minutes into, Kuma, into Accra, there were four dispatch riders before him. They went ahead of him. Five cars went ahead of him. On the right was a taxi parked with three Muslims in it. When he got to the car of the president, from nowhere, the driver just stepped on the ignition, boom, and crossed the president, and his car went up in the air, some assaulted three times. And went off the edge into the valley, and he stood there and kept on the windows. And immediately security had to get him out. That woke him up. But I'm telling you, without watchmen, the enemy will fool around. That is why we got to pray for President Bush. You hear me? Because I'm telling you, the enemy wants his prophetic destiny and assignment to end at one term. The enemy don't want him to cross to the second term. And you got to understand something. The father failed at the second term. And his crisis began after the Gulf War. Are you, are you hearing me? And he was able to turn the people against his father, and he didn't make the second term. His crisis, the crisis of the sun, have also started after the war on Iraq. Try, listen, intercessors, you got to listen to the news and see what the enemy is doing. You want to know, apart from picking things up by the Spirit, you really want to know what is on the minds of the enemy, watch the news. You can read Fox News, CNN. You can tell what the enemy is pointing at and where he's going. And you can say, no, 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 devil. Don't even try it. Not this one. Somebody say, not this one, not this one, not this one. You got to pray for President Bush. For the man to stand up against abortion. To stand up against gay marrying, all those times. I'm telling you, that is big. I'm telling you, that is heavy duty. Those are weightier issues. Nobody wants to touch it. And you got to pray for him. It will be a big disservice to the kingdom of God and the church of Christ in America if we don't pray for that man and he doesn't make it. God will ask the church tomorrow. We must not just enjoy the benefits and we must not just celebrate him for his principles, but we got to intercede and pray that he will not die in office. And number two, that his prophetic destiny will be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. We have a responsibility. Go ahead, man. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Uh -huh. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. Mm -hmm. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come, and uh -huh. blow not the trumpet. And blow not the trumpet. And the people be not warned. And people be not warned. If the sword come, uh -huh. and take any person from among them, uh -huh. he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. The watchman, not the pastor. Not the bishop. But the watchmen, and the watchmen are who? The intercessors. Sometimes we want the pastors to pray, to fast, to teach, to study, to preach, to do everything. But that is not it. We are called to be watchmen upon the walls. For our families, for our city, so that the enemy's sword will not be able to take anybody out. 
And as intercessors, you got to be very careful how you deal with the pastors. You don't go with arrogance and pride to tell them how to run the church and what God is doing. You submit to them what God has told you and you ask them to judge it. Because the Bible gives us right to judge prophecy. Let one prophesy, let the others judge. And just because you think you saw and you heard from God, don't mean I don't have the right to judge. And one of the reasons why there's a lot of problem with intercessors in the church is because a lot of people are praying and watching and they don't understand the rules of engagement. They don't understand the workings of the protocol in the church. And just because you see, you got to be careful how you handle what you see and what you hear. When David seen and he see Nathan went to David, he didn't say, King, that says the Lord thou hast sinned. He didn't say that. A lot of wisdom. And he said, you know, King, something terrible has happened in the kingdom or in town. A very wealthy man who has so much land or sheepfold had a guest and his neighbor was poor. All he had was one lamb. He took his neighbor's lamb and he began to explain what had happened in town. And the king said, this is bad. That rich man must die. And he must pay back four four lambs to the poor man. And then the prophet said, king, with all respect, it looks like you the man. Look at somebody say, you the man. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And immediately, he woke David up. Now listen, David became self-righteous. And you got to be careful how you react to things you hear. I have learned a great deal over the years. I don't care what I hear. I'm very careful how I react. Because one of the strongest weapons that was used against Jesus was to always get him to react. And he never reacted. They always came to say something to get him to react. So they had advantage over him. But Jesus never reacted. He responded, but he did not react. There's a difference between reacting and responding. Reacting is when you act without thinking. Responding is when you think before you react. But David reacted. In self-righteousness. He judged others. Not knowing that he was judging himself. And he said, let that man die. By that pronouncement, he signed his own dead warrant. Then he said, let that man pay back four lands to the poor man. And by the act of repentance for the Spirit, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Through the law of repentance, he was able to overrule and to override the sentence of death that he pronounced on himself. But he did nothing about the four lambs, so four of his sons died. Because he said, let that rich man pay the poor man four lambs. Four of his sons died. We got to be careful how we judge others and what we say. The Bible says, judge not that you may not be judged. For by the same standard you judge others, you shall be judged. And most time, you know why? The very areas we judge people at are the areas where we ourselves are guilty of. Is anybody hearing me? He said, if the watchmen don't see to sound the alarm and the enemy comes in and takes life, they would have died because they didn't hear. But I would demand their blood from the hands of the watchers. Somebody say, heavy. It is serious when people are not praying. 
It is serious. Before the war in Liberia started, we were praying, and I saw blood. And I said it in the church. And I said, I see blood all over the streets of Morovia. And I had some friends in Liberia, and I sent the word. I said, call for fasting. Corporate fasting. National fasting. Somebody cry out. Get the wailing women. Cry out on the streets against the enemy's intention, against pregnant women and innocent children. Cry out. Go on a prayer wall. Lift up a lamentation against the enemy. You know what they said? They sent a word to me and said, the gate, it is written, Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. I said, you are sick. You don't understand scripture. The rest is history. Turn your Bibles with me to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16 to 26, quickly. 1 Kings chapter 3, 16 to 23. Oh, that men may pray. Oh, that men may pray like they've never prayed before. And look. First Kings, yeah, go ahead. 23. First Kings chapter 3. Yeah, First Kings 3. Chapter number 3, verse 16 to 26. <coughs> then came there two women mm-hmm. that were harlots mm-hmm. unto the king and stood before him. Uh-huh. And the one woman said, O oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, uh-huh. and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and you laid see, it. You see, when was, when did the exchange of the dead child and the living child took place? When thy handmaiden what? Slept. When I slumbered, an exchange between death and life took place. Go ahead. And laid it in her bosom, and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, No, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this, and this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Look at me. God gave you a living miracle, not a dead one. And the enemy is trying to kill some of your miracle. And you got to consider what gave you and don't accept the situation. Are you hearing me, somebody? Look at somebody and say, consider it. Don't accept it. Your miracle is alive and not dead. Sometimes God gives us living things, good things, and the devil comes in to kill it, to kill the life out of it, the joy. You fight for a blessing, and the blessing comes, and the devil just kills the joy out of the blessing. He just takes the joy out. So you are blessed, but you can't rejoice. You are blessed, but you are not happy. You are blessed, but you can't enjoy it, because the very joy has been killed and taken out by the enemy. Go ahead. Then said the king, The one saith, this is, my, this is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other say, No, but the, thy son is the dead, and my son is the living. Mm-hmm. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman who... Stop the, there. Look at me. You know something? The devil wants to divide your inheritance. He wants to divide your blessings. But I want you to say my inheritance will not be divided. The inheritance of my children and my grandchildren will not be divided. There is a fight over your inheritance and the inheritance of your children. And you've got to contend for the inheritance of your kids and your children's children. Is anybody hearing me? 
Now the woman said, if I can't have it, then I want it divided. And the other woman said, my inheritance will not be divided. I am not having it divided. But the other woman was so wise. She realized that if she tried to settle this matter with the other harlot friend of hers, that this matter would never be settled. And for all the life of that little child, nobody will ever know who truly is the mother. There would have been a controversy and a question mark over that child for the rest of his life between a fight of two harlots. So the other woman said, I will take the case to the king. Some of you got to take this matter to the king. You got to take this matter to the Lord. You got to take it to the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You got to settle this with the higher authority. Because if you try to deal with it on your own, you will never solve it. You got to take it up to the king. Look at somebody and say, take it to the king. There are some things you got to stop trying to deal with it on the natural plane. You'll never solve it. There are certain spiritual issues. I said to somebody the other day, I said, you cannot pacify a demon. Is anybody hearing me? I said, you can't pacify a demon. You can't convince a demon. You can't satisfy a demon. And I said, you don't solve. Spiritual problems with physical weapons. You need spiritual weapons to resolve physical, spiritual issues. And what is spiritual must be confronted by spiritual weapons. The Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are what? Mighty through what? God. How does the weapons of our warfare are praise. We send forth prayers to the Father, and the prayers go forth as an incense. It is mixed with fire in heaven, according to Revelation 8, and it is sent down to the earth. So it goes to God, it comes from God to the earth, and scatters the enemy. The Bible said that Peter was kept in prison. And prayers went before God without ceasing. And an angel of the Lord came from heaven in response to the prayers. And the Bible said, and Peter was bound feet and hands in chains. And the Bible said, the chains on their own accord fell. And the iron doors opened on their own accord. Nobody touched it. I want to tell you, if the church will begin to pray, bondages will begin to fall. Closed doors will open on their own accord. Are you hearing me, somebody? People who are addicted will begin to be loose on their own accord. You don't have to touch anybody. As I'm ministering the word of the Lord, the power of the Holy Ghost can come upon you and set you free just where you are. Somebody say, talk to me. There are certain controversies between you and loved ones and siblings, that you can never resolve it until you take it to the king. Take it to the king. There are some issues I don't want to talk about anymore because you never solve it. You never solve spiritual issues by talking about it. Take it to the king. And the king said, bring me the sword, which is the rhema word of God. He said, bring me the rhema. And with the rhema, just one word from God, you can resolve the issue. He said, bring me the word. I need a rhema. Just one word from God. I came to tell you tonight that God has the last word for your life. The last word for your life is in the hands of God. It's not in the hands of the enemy. God has the last word. Tomorrow night I'm going to preach on that. God has the last word. I don't care what the devil said. God has the last word. I don't care where you are. God has the last word. Let the devil do his worst. God has the last word. I don't care what it looks like right now. He has the last word. Say yes. yes. Lift up your hand. Pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute. Somebody talk to the Father. Father, we 
Yanamo seto lemehe. Ukada bahako dubi hidi kabahagos. Redeke de bido guste kalabrakes. Shene meneke kebugas. Kadando si prados. Kadabo si do lobroke de sandos. Kabe da kubande si da bahagas. Rakabadi si da kabagado hubozai. Yes, yes, somebody talk to the father. He miss hearing your voice. He says, talk to me. Kadaboho de bidi hedes. Libre de kede bogosis. Kabogose de lebro godili bahagades. Somebody talk to the father. Libra bobodi and de lebro godisados. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Labra de boki de lebro gode lebros. Kahabro gode libro dos. Hallelujah. Let's look at two more scriptures and I'll release you. Mark chapter 14, verse 34 to 41. Mark 14, 34 to 31. And I have one more scripture and I'll let you go. Kabo Hojada. Hallelujah. And he saith unto them, uh-huh. My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground. And he said what? He said, watch. Say, watch. 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 Say, keep awake. keep awake. Say, stay alert. Stay alert. Say, be sober. Be, sober. Be, vigilant. be vigilant. Go ahead. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground <laughs> and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass He from did him. what? He went forward a little. So, as leaders, we must always go forward a little are you hearing me? We must always go forward a little than everybody else. Press it in a little bit longer than everybody else. Are you hearing me? You cannot be tired. You've got to develop a stamina in prayer. Somebody say stamina. Somebody say prayer stamina. That you don't get tired and you don't quit until you have a note of victory inside of you that the battle is won. But sometimes we give in to the flesh. But in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus pressed in to the place where the sweat of his body was blood. Was as blood. The Bible said, for ye have not yet resisted to the place of blood. There are things I'm still dealing with that I haven't yet had the note of victory over. I'm still dealing with them in prayer. And I got to keep on. Ah, Udabahakasha. I got to stay in the Gadastos. Mario Dobo Hoka Bagiria Soto Marabahadiki Yasos. I got to stay in there till I have the note of victory over that situation. I can't quit. I can't give up. I got to hold on to the horns of the altar. The gut, something got to happen. I got to press until something happens. I feel the contraction. My baby is about to come. Are you hearing me? Something. I don't know about you, but I carry something in my womb. I feel like I'm carrying a miracle. I'm carrying a great ministry. Something in the inside of me is moving. My baby is living. My baby has turned around. The leg is coming down through the birth canal. And I got to push and hold on a little bit longer. I cannot rest till this thing comes out. The Bible said there is now rest for the people of God. Therefore, let us labor that we may enter into rest. There cannot be true rest until we have labor. Kabo Shata. Go ahead, sister. And he prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Uh-huh. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Uh-huh. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Uh-huh. And he cometh and finding them sleeping and saith unto Peter, Simon, uh-huh. sleepest thou? Sleepest couldst, thou? Couldst not thou watch one hour? Oh my God. Watch ye and pray. Watch ye and pray. Go ahead. Lest ye enter into temptation. Uh-huh. The spirit truly is ready, but uh-huh. the flesh is weak. Uh-huh. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. He prayed for three hours. It wasn't one hour. He prayed for an hour. Came back. Found them sleeping. Went back again and prayed another hour, two hours. Go ahead and see. And when he returned, he found them asleep again. As asleep what? Again. That was two hours. Go ahead. For their eyes were heavy, neither wist they what to answer him. Uh-huh. 
And he cometh the third time and saith unto time. them, Three hours. So it was in one hour. Three hours. And you know why he had to do that for three hours? Because he couldn't let go until he had the note of victory that I have been empowered and I have been strengthened and I have the capability to carry this weight and to finish my course. For this course I was born and I cannot fail. I cannot miscarry. My destiny must come to a full term. Go ahead. Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. Uh -huh. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Uh -huh. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately while he yet spake cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with look at sword. Me. Okay. Look at me, look at me. I know you all know the story, but I'll tell you something. When the temptation came, because he had prayed, he had the upper hand. Somebody say the upper hand. He had the upper hand and he prevailed. Say prevail. Because he prayed, he had the upper hand. But because they slept, when the temptation came, they could not withstand it. Hear me. If you spend more time in God in prayer, you will spend less time with the devil and with problems. Is anybody hearing me? Jesus always spent much time with the Father. And whenever he met the devil, all he said was, cut out. He spent much time with the Father in prayer. When he, he met sickness, he said, be healed. Before he won walking on the sea, he had prayed for 12 hours. It wasn't just the act of faith. And I told you yesterday that the reason for the preaching of the word is to get people to pray. If you look at the book of Romans, the 10th chapter, he talks about whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Delivered. That word call means whosoever shall pray to him shall be delivered. The purpose of preaching is to get people to pray. He said, how can they call on whom? On him. Whom they have not known. How can they believe unless they hear the word? How can they hear unless they have a preacher? How can they preach unless they've been sent? So what is the purpose for preaching? To get people to pray. To get people to call upon the name of the Lord. And I told you that the reason for the spirit of Elijah has told you that there are three comings of Jesus. The first coming of Jesus, John the Baptist had to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. To go before him to precede the coming of the Lord. Then the second coming, which is the rapture, they shall come again, the rising up of the Elijah's generation to precede him in intercession. To make the crooked path straight. Bring down every mountain and hill. And to, and, to, and to prepare the way of the Lord. For a greater move and manifestation of the spirit. Then shall come the rapture. And after the rapture. The third coming. Where he returns with the church. The saints on the earth. To reign for 1,000 years. Elijah shall return. The great intercessor. Back to the earth. Moses shall return as a witness. So you have two witnesses, and one as a witness, one as an intercessor, coming back to the earth. So why is the church and the Holy Ghost, and we are gone out of here, there will be a witness on the earth as Moses and an intercessor to occupy the earth until such a time that they are taken out for scriptures to be fulfilled. Prayer will always precede every move of God. And I tell you that as much as teaching is good, singing is good, preaching is good, the preaching and the teaching and the singing and the praise and the worship that has a lasting impact is the preaching and the teaching, the praise and the worship that was born out of the womb for prayer. In the 18th century, a man by the name of D.L. Moody was traveling through upstate New York. He sat in the train 
When they got to Rochester, New York, he didn't come down. He just sat in the train, praying. And the Holy Ghost fell on the city of Rochester. And people were falling on the power, being baptized in the Holy Ghost, confessing their sin, calling upon God for mercy. And somebody said, what's going on in town? And an old lady said, it looks like D.L. Moody is in town. My God, I want that kind of an anointing. Are you hearing me, somebody? Thank God for church and all that we're doing. But I want that reputation that when I come into town, things begin to happen. And people say, it looks like the archbishop is in town. Somebody say, Lord, do it one more time. One more time. Oh, I don't know about you, but one more time. I got a great cry in the inside of me. I have read and I have heard of the things God did in the whole time. But he's the same yesterday, today, tomorrow and forever. And I want that spirit of Elijah to come upon me that I may walk in the power of Elijah. Amen. And I told her the spirit of Elijah is the spirit of intercession. And the power of Elijah is the ability to open the heavens and to close the heavens. And to call fire from heaven. And to do supernatural things. And I told you one of the power of Elijah is to overtake horses and chariots. The spirit of the overtaker. Divine acceleration and speed. One more scripture. One more Isaiah 56, 9-11. Isaiah 56, 9-11. I don't know about you, Queen. Queen Victoria of Great Britain said, I fear nothing but the prayers of John Knox. And John Knox cried and said, Give me Scotland or I die. Ah, he told Oho Kabahas, Wahaki doho bolsut, Udaka duhuna. That all those mountains and all those valleys may be exalted. That the, those mantles and anointings that have departed from the earth shall begin to fall upon the living again. The Bible said when Elisha died, the mantle to raise the dead was in the bones of Elijah the dead prophet. Why? Because there was nobody to inherit that mantle. Ah, where is the mantle of Lester Samuel? Why is the anointing and the mantle of Daddy Hagen? These are great ones. The changing of the gods, they've come and gone. But why is the mantle of Daddy Hagen? Where are their mantles and anointing that shook the nations? These were nation movers and world changers. Where are their mantles? Where are their anointings? We have a generation that don't have a desire and a hunger for God anymore. But I, I, I want to see a generation like Elisha who cries for the mantles of the fathers. And say, I want double portion of that mantle of the fathers. There's a generation that have no respect for the mantle of fathers anymore. Isaiah 56, 9 and 11. 9 to 11. All ye beasts of the field come to devour. Listen yet... carefully. This is demons making announcements. Go ahead. Yes, all you beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind. And His they watchmen are, are what? Go ahead. They are all ignorant. Uh -huh. They are all dumb dogs. Uh -huh. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Uh -huh. Yes, they are greedy dogs uh -huh. which can never have enough. My God. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. My God. They all look to their own way. My God. Everyone for his gain My God. from his quarter. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, uh -huh. and tomorrow shall be as, the day, as this day, and much more abundant. Look at me. Have you heard what the demons were saying about us? They said we are what? Blind. Dumb dogs. Can back. Greedy. Ignorant. Oh, Jesus. He told a host. Talk to the Father. Put your Bible down for one minute. Talk to the Father. With your hands lifted up, just talk to the Father as you sit in heavenly places. Ah, I don't know about you, but tell him, Father, I want the spirit of Elijah, which is the spirit of intercession and prayer. Elijah was a man 
just like you and I, subject to like passions as we are. But the Bible said he prayed. That was what made Elijah different. He was not an angel, but a man like you and I. But what made him super being was the fact that he prayed. Talk to the Father. Pray like you've never prayed before. With your hands lifted up. Reach out to the Father like you've never prayed before. Idoko shata. Sanoko sit. Iko tu namagiso. Hey, to la waki isu namako do imbra into sakani atasuda. Itolondo wadi kazudi bini atako. Lepro tu kalisa. Ile tu kamahaka. Rido bobobo shata. Ideli tu ku anti suta. Imayanda wali atanakia. Inonusa masia. Itolusa paradi kadus. Iteli kabadusa. Lebro de soto. Somebody, somebody talk to the father. Somebody lift up your voice. Ikodolo boko di stala magadia. Lede, 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 leko baba. I can't hear you, I can't hear you. Hey, 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 hey. Groan, somebody travail. Somebody travail. Somebody travail. Somebody cry out. Somebody cry out, cry out. David said, evening, morning, and noon will I cry out. Ikoda babosa, lando bosa, ikado lo babo kota, letale kabo do sota, labrandes, ipolo koti lebro dosi, karande le babo sakada ha. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Talk to the father. I refuse to be blind. I refuse to be greedy. I refuse not to back. I refuse not to cry out. I refuse not to cry out. Hey, 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 somebody, 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 put your hands on your stomach. Somebody, stand on your feet. Somebody, talk to the Father. Somebody, cry out. Somebody, cry out. Somebody, cry out. Yeah. Kala ma 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 mo kasada, lendere ke bo mronde leso, botolo bo 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 kisa, yekate bro bo do le bro des, tabono bro ke di la bro gadi bo ho do se. Ah, cry out. Cry out. Pray one more prayer. Pray one more time. Pray again. Pray again. Cry out, somebody. Cry out. Hey! Lucia Kudas. He saw the Libo Kusa. The Lebo Kodamosa. Lando Sondos. Lando Sondos. Kadibo do shado kadibo sata. Le polobo ki shodo lobo ka. Mahaki sodos. Don't quit now. Don't quit now. Press a little bit. Press, press. Press a little bit. Press a little bit. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it till you feel the note of victory. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Don't give up now. Don't give up now. Press a little bit. Stay in there till the baby comes. The baby is coming. The baby is coming. The miracle is coming. Stay with it. Come on, somebody. Stay with it. Push a little bit. Stay with it. Stay with it. Hallelujah. Jesus. Mandoko Bobo Shaka. Hallelujah. Kabo Shaka Haka. Kabo Shaka Haka.